Hello everyone, how are you doing? This is MD Tech here with another quick tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to resolve if Starter Prepare cannot complete automatically and that you were experiencing an error with it. So this should be a fairly quick tutorial and we're going to jump right to it. So the first thing I would suggest you guys do is if you've already exhausted the methods using the built-in troubleshooting utilities that are included in Windows. So if you launch a Starter Prepare utility and it couldn't find anything, at this point, I'd recommend you go on and download the Windows 7 ISO file. And you want to boot it to a DVD or compatible USB flash disk. And you want to boot your computer off of that. So if you can access the boot menu, you want to boot your computer to that device. And I've made tutorials like that in the past. And it will depend a little bit on your motherboard as to which key you want to press to boot your device off of that USB flash disk or whatever media medium you use to boot the computer from but it should be pretty straightforward. You want to basically get to the boot menu and you want to boot your computer off of that device. In my case, I already have the Windows 7 ISO file burnt and in my optical drive or my DVD drive and I'm going to boot my computer off of that device. So I'm going to select that from the boot menu here and you will have to press the key to continue on with this troubleshooting utility. Okay, so at this point you want to set all your correct languages here. It doesn't really matter so much for what we're doing, but you want to select next. And instead of clicking the install now button, you want to left click on the button that says repair your computer right here. So left click on that. Again, we are literally booting off of our DVD. This might look similar as if your computer was restarting, but basically this tutorial is going to be kind of going around that in a sense. So you see your system recovery options here. If you had any system images backed up, I would recommend going to the second option here and then restore your computer using a system image you maybe have on a disk or somewhere else that we can boot our computer from. But however, since we do not, and I'm assuming most of you guys do not, and I would actually recommend that you do that second method if you have a system image backup, that you select the first option here and then select the operating system. Most people should only have one operating system listed here and it should say Windows 7. So we're going to select next and now we have the recovery tool menu here and there's quite a few different things we can go through. We still have that system image recovery but again I probably wouldn't suggest that at least at first. I'm going through a couple of the obscure ones. Um, you have the Windows Memory Diagnostic if you believe you're having a RAM or memory error like if you're getting a blue screen it has something to do with memory. I'd recommend running this diagnostic scan to see if there's something wrong with perhaps your RAM sticks because sometimes RAM can have issues and maybe one of your sticks is bad. It's not always the most common issue, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. You can also run different commands. You can run a check disk scan as well as an SFC scan now. And we'll go into that in a couple moments here. But the first one I'd recommend doing would be to head over to the system restore option that says restore windows to an earlier point in time. And you want to left click on that should say restore system files and settings. System restore can help fix problems that might be making your computer run slowly or stop responding. System restore does not affect any of your documents, pictures, or other personal data. If you left click on next, it will give you a list of different restore points that are on your computer. Now, I want to go through some other methods in this tutorial without wasting a lot of time, but I would recommend if you have any restore points that you can see listed in here, you want to left click on the most recently created one and then select next and then you'll click on this finish button to confirm and we're going to restart our computer and it will automatically restart your computer and then it should be able to hopefully restore your computer back to an earlier state. If that does not work for you, you want to basically get back into this utility. So let's say we tried that first method, we had a restore point and it did not resolve our issue, which believe it or not actually should resolve for most people. 
I notice that works a good percentage of the time. I recommend you try running the startup repair utility again. If you already tried it before, I would recommend you do try one more time. Automatically fix prompts are preventing Windows from starting. So if you left click on that, it'll start scanning your system for prompts and it might tell you to just click on finish and it'll try and restart the computer. But I'm going to cancel out of there. And the last thing I'd actually consider doing would be to left click on the command prompt link. So basically at this point you should have restarted your computer a few times after going through these different methods. You'd want to open up command prompt, this command prompt option. And now you want to type in, so now you want to type in chk, dsk, space, and now whichever drive letter Windows is installed on, most people should be the C drive. I'm just going to put that out there. It could be the D drive as well. So if the C doesn't work for you, like I'm showing right here, try a different letter. And you want to do a colon, which is basically two dots, one on top of the other. Then you want to do a space. And then you want to do a forward slash F. So again, CHK, DSK, space. And then whatever your drive letter is, most people should be C. And then immediately after that, a colon, which is one dot on top of the other. Another space, forward slash F. Then you want to hit enter. And this will begin running a check disk scan on your hard drive. If it doesn't come back with anything, it probably means that you're not actually scanning your hard drive or it's a non-existent drive letter. So I just want to put that out there. If you're not seeing it look like this and it doesn't begin scanning, it probably means that that's not the correct letter. And you want to try it again preferably with the letter D or E or F. It'll likely be earlier in the alphabet. Most people should be C, but it can be a little bit different. And you can see it's already about 66% done. It might vary depending on how large your hard disk is. You just want to be patient. Okay, once it's done that, I'd actually also recommend before closing out of here, once you have this blinking cursor, you want to type in SFC space forward slash scan now. Scan now should all be one word here, so scan S-C-A-N-N-O-W, and there should be a space in between the SFC and the forward slash, and then you want to hit enter on your keyboard. So it says system repair utility pending which requires a reboot to complete, restart Windows and run SFC again. So you would have to restart your computer. So at this point I recommend closing out of here. I'd recommend clicking on this restart button and then hopefully you can boot back into Windows normally. Now I should note if you change the boot order in order to boot off of a CD or DVD, I'd recommend changing the boot order back to booting from Windows first or booting from your hard drive first. Now if you remove your CD or DVD at this point, it doesn't really matter, it'll still boot off the hard drive, but it's just good practice and it will speed up your computer a little bit during the boot if you have it booting off of your hard drive where Windows is installed on first, because that is the first place it will attempt to boot your computer off of. So if you aren't able to get back into Windows, I would still recommend trying to run the SFC scan now, the thing we did at the end, and you will have to restart your computer once you type it into the command prompt. It will have to be an elevated command line window. So basically if you head it over to the start button and type in command prompt, and then if you right click on it, you want to left click on run as administrator. When you receive a user account control window, you want to select yes. And now you want to type in SFC space forward slash scan now like we did before. And it should take a little bit of time to run, but I would recommend letting it go and then restart your computer once it's done. And that should be about it guys. So I hope this brief tutorial was able to help you guys out. And as always, thank you for watching.
and I look forward to catching you all in the next tutorial. Goodbye.